Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE physical education lesson. We're going to continue with the skeletal and muscular system today, moving on to the second lesson in the chapter, joint type, structure and formation. As always, we'll be following the exact learning objectives specified in the Cambridge syllabus, which are to identify the three different types of joint and to describe two types of freely movable joints. So we'll start off just by defining what a joint is. And a joint is the point at which two or more bones meet, allowing movement. The first type of joint within the human body are fixed or immovable joints. These are fibrous joints where little or no movement is possible. They can be found between the flat bones that fuse together to form the skull or the cranium. Slightly movable or cartilaginous joints contain cartilage and ligaments which restrict the movement of these joints. As a result, only a small range of movement is possible. Cartilaginous joints can be found between the vertebrae of the spine. Our final joint type are freely movable or synovial joints. This is the most common form of joint within the body and almost every movement we perform depends on them. Examples of synovial joints include ball and socket and hinge joints. They provide a wide range of movement and can be found in the knee, ankle, hip, elbow and shoulder. Now, since synovial joints are so common and fundamental to movement, we need to look at their structure in a little bit more detail. The synovial membrane lines the inside of the joint capsule and secretes synovial fluid into the cavity. Synovial fluid is a lubricant and its role is to reduce friction. This not only allows for smoother movement, but also reduces wear and tear. The joint capsule is made of a fibrous membrane and sits just outside of the synovial membrane. Its role is to protect the inside of the joint and provide some additional structure to keep those bones in place. Ligaments are strong elastic fibers and their main role is to connect bones together and to hold them in place at joints. Different sets of ligaments hold the knee joint together. Some run down the outside of the knee, while others, including the ACL or anterior cruciate ligament, sits directly inside of the joint. Cartilage is our final component. It's made of a strong and flexible material and it's found at the end of the bones. Its primary function is shock absorption and preventing those bones from knocking together. Although it's not actually part of the internal structure of a synovial joint, tendons also have an important role to play. They're also made of tough fibrous tissue and connect muscle to bone, such as the patella tendon that runs over the front of the knee joint, connecting to the quadricep above and providing some additional tension to help out the ligaments and the joint capsule. We now move on to our second learning objective, which is to describe the two types of freely movable or synovial joint. Although there are several, you only need to know two for your exam. Ball and socket joints form as one bone has a bulge or ball-like structure that fits into the socket on the other bone. They provide a wide range of movement, but as a result are less stable and therefore more prone to injury. You can find ball and socket joints at the hip and the shoulder, and without them we wouldn't be able to perform actions such as bowling in cricket, swimming the butterfly stroke or serving in tennis. Our second freely movable joint is a hinge joint. Hinge joints are only capable of producing movement in one direction and are therefore much more stable and less prone to injury than ball and socket joints. Examples of hinge joints in the human body include the elbow and the knee, which both flex and extend when performing movements such as a spike or serve in volleyball or a jump shot in basketball. Now, believe it or not, we have already covered everything you need to know on joint type, structure and formation. I really hope you found this video useful and I'll see you next time for the third lesson in the skeletal and muscular system chapter, movement types.